Wondering how your mindset affects your life? How to bring more energy into your business and life? Millions of people around the world ask these same questions daily. You are in the right place. Learn practices that will help give your life the meaning and success you've been searching for. Welcome to the Charge Podcast, teaching you how to create habits around real goals every day. Practical life advice from those who made it. Here's your host, Gary Wilbers. This sponsorship brought to you by Success in Hiring. Are you struggling with recruiting, hiring, and retaining the right candidates for your business? I know the challenges you face every day running your business. Let me help you by sharing my success in hiring system with you. It is a five-part series where we will cover these five areas. One, recruiting. Number two, interviewing. Number three, hiring. Number four, onboarding. And number five, coaching. You will receive one video each day along with the downloadable resources to make it easy to implement the areas we covered that day. The best part of the series, it is totally free. Why? Because my goal is to help business owners succeed in business and life. To receive the series, go to chargepodcast.com and click on the success and hiring link. Welcome, Chargers. We're glad to have you again this week for another great podcast. I cannot believe it. We are in that fourth quarter of 2021. We are ending this year in the next few weeks, so we've got to be prepared. And the thing is, I love bringing you guests with different viewpoints because I think that really helps us set us up for success. So you're going to love our conversation today. So make sure you really kind of lean in to what we're talking about and how you can start applying it. So as you jump into 2022, you can start using it right out the gate. So today I have with us Yinka Abenley, and she's an, it has an MBA and a PMP and is a former financial services professional turned author, excellent strategist, and an excellence coach. Her goal and life's purpose is to equip leaders with transformational habits and systems of excellence. Yinka believes that excellence is choosing to rise above the average or mediocrity. A person or organization will start to see measurable improvements and results once a concrete decision is made to rise above being average. She has helped many to obtain outstanding measurable results through teaching and equipping them with dynamic habits and systems of excellence. Now you know why we want Yinka on the podcast. Yinka, it is great to have you. Welcome to the Charge Podcast. Thank you. Thank you so much, Gary. It's a well, honor Yinka. to be here. Oh, it is going to be a great conversation. I love talking about habits and those systems of excellence. So we're going to have a great conversation around that. But before we do, I got to a little review a little bit and checked out some things on your podcast and check some of your YouTube videos. And like all of us, we get to a point of where we're at because there's a story. And would you share a little bit of that story? Because I think then that helps the audience really understand who Yinka Yinka really is. Right, wonderful. Yeah, I'll be happy to share that. So my uh, my story, my journey, um, dates all the way back to 2004. I'll start from there. So basically, um, right before I left grad school, um, business school, Um, I had a great job lined up with one of the largest investment banks um, in the world. And, you know, really that's what, you know, they grew me to go work for these large organizations. So, um, you know, I worked in the financial services space um, for several years. I loved what I did. And in 2009, the Great Recession hit. And I don't know if you remember very well, the financial services sector was hit the hardest. So 2009, I found myself, well, I lost my job, my entire department, technically. So I found myself without a job. Um, I was heavily pregnant with my second child. And my husband and I had just purchased our new home then as well. So um, all of that coupled together just brought on a deep sense of anxiety. You know, I was, I called those days my clueless days. I didn't know any better. I wasn't, I didn't have the tools to deal with that basically. And um, I just, you know, 
just thought the worst. I kept thinking, how would we get out of this situation? And it was during that time I went for a, a regular um, pregnancy routine checkup. And I remember um, the doctor pulled me into his office. He had this very positive look on his face. And I was, I thought, you know, what's going on? And then he just said to me, he sat me down, he's like, Yinka, what is going on? And I'm like, nothing, you know, nothing. He said, no, um, the, 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 the reading, the vitals are saying otherwise. Well, what the doctor didn't know was this. Um, I've been waking up, Gary, um, for days. I will wake up in the middle of the night, just sweating profusely, just trying to figure everything out on my own with no answers. And then I'll go back to bed um, and then wake up in the morning. I still had, I, my son was two then and just carrying as if nothing. I thought I had all that covered up. Well, um, sitting in the doctor's chair that day, he said to me, he said, well, if you don't, um, whatever it is that you're doing, you need to stop because I will hate for you to develop a very serious complications this far along in your pregnancy. And, you know, Gary, that was, um, that was a wake up call. So I remember driving home that day and I just kept thinking, you know, I have to do better. And over the next several days, I reflected deeply. I, I looked inwards. Um, and then, you know, I said to myself, you know, I have no control over a lot of things, but if those things that I have control over, I will do my best to be, to be the best that I can possibly be in those areas. And that was it. And that started my journey of excellence and I focused on one area of life and then I just, you know, that continued on to other areas of life. And it was through that journey that I discovered my calling and just this deep, this passion to help others. You know, I saw the results in my life and I just wanted to do that for others as well. And, you know, that brings me to where we are today. And what I do on a day-to-day -day basis is just to help others um, through the principle, through the principle systems and ideas of excellence help them uncover the roadblock, the pain points that would help them, you know, then go on to get the success, the momentum, momentum that they, they want in life, basically. And just, you know, just helping to change lives, adding value to their lives for the better, because I strongly believe that we are all people of excellence. I love that, Yinka. And I really appreciate you sharing that because I think it really frames up what we want to discuss today for our audience members. As you know, you've said you've listened to some podcasts and loving it. And the chargers, we call them chargers. And the challenge sometimes we have, and I don't know who it is, but someone's listening today and is needing to hear that. And like I said, with us being in that fourth quarter, to me, this is the springboard to what you want 2023 to be, 2022 to be. So we have to really take a look at that. But let's give ourselves some time to be able to discover that, what that excellence is, and we'll get into that. But I think the best place to start is probably with your book. You've recently wrote a book. Why don't you share with them the title there and kind of what really, I guess, give them a synopsis of the book, and then that'll come on really start our conversation, if that's okay. Thank you. So my book is entitled Joab, King David's Top General, Essential Lessons on Character. And it's, um, it's a biography on Joab. I don't know if you know who Joab was. So he was second in command to um, King David um, of the Old Testament. And he happened to be a very powerful, well-accomplished leader. And, you know, I always get this question, like, why Joab, you know? But... Um, Joab was, he was a very complex leader. Um, I have a deep passion for, for leadership. I, you know, I study leaders and I just really have a deep passion for, for leaders. Joab was a very complex individual. He was really great at what he did. On the work front, he excelled. In his 40 year tenure as um, commander in chief, he was undefeated. He was a master strategist. He was just, he was great at what he did. It was every king's um, dream of a second in command, basically. But sadly, you know, um, Joab, in his, as a person, he was a ruthless individual. He wasn't a kind person, you know? And we see as his, the story of his life unfolds, we see how, you know, he was so focused on the work front and he excelled. And sadly, he didn't pay that much attention to, you know, the personal side of things, basically. And as a leader, 
um, you can only get away with that for so long because after a while, you know, you can't, there's no dichotomy. After a while, one spills into the other. And then we see how Joab, just because he didn't have, um, I guess you, you can call them good moral traits. You, start, you see how he starts to make all the other decisions. And sadly, you know, that um, led to um, a very sad ending, basically. But there's so many lessons. It's the lessons from his life story, which is applicable to anyone in um, any leadership role. So, yes, he was a man of excellence, but then he had his flaws as well. Yeah, I think I can see why that sharing your story, see, shares why that really spoke to you at a time probably that was real crucial to you. And I think that becomes really kind of really frames up what we want to do and who we want to be and what your the work that you're doing now. So what do you think some of those qualities really of the authentic leader is? Because today we can't do that. We, you know, and some people still try to do that. They try to separate work. They're one person and then they're a different person at home. And we're finding out that really doesn't work very well. No, it doesn't. You know, something. it doesn't work that way. It really doesn't work that way. Um, so, yeah, there are several. I'll share a couple with you. Um, well, first of all, you know, as a leader, you should be skilled at what you do. You should know your work and, you know, um, and do the best. You have to keep learning because leadership, Gary, as you know, carries a lot of influence and responsibility. And um, the decisions that we make as leaders don't just affect us alone. They are compounded. So a leader should be skilled at what at the work he or she does. Um, another one that I have here is um, a leader should be accountable. Mm. And I'll, using Joab as an example, we saw that as Joe, as he rose higher in ranks, he got to a place where even his own boss, the king, was scared of him. You know, he was just, he was a very powerful individual. He had a larger than life personality. And um, there was no one, people, there was no one that could say to him, you know what, um, you missed the mark in this area. You know, as a leader, we never want to, because that's just the beginning of the end. We never want to get to that place of where there's nobody that can, you know, come up to us and say to us, you know, you missed the mark over there. Um, you shouldn't have said that. You shouldn't have done things that way. So accountability is um, a big one. Um, a leader should um, have steady, controlled emotions. Um, again, that ties back to the decision making you know, the, the decision a leader makes a compounded. So a leader should, um, should be a person who, who knows their emotional stance and those emotions should be controlled, steady. They should know what their triggers are. They should, you know, we're not perfect in individuals, but they should have tools, a support system in place so that you just, you don't, we don't have a leader that, who's just, you know, um, making decisions, um, you know, of the, off the like handle. That. Yes. So, um, yeah. And then I guess I'll just, I'll add one more to it. Discipline. Um, I think, you know, it's very important for a leader to be disciplined basically again, because, you know, there are people looking up to you, um, you discipline, they should be structured in how you do things. You're not just doing things haphazardly. You're just, you're not just making decisions, you know, there should be some structure and discipline um, around that. And um, if I may, just one more. <laughs> sure. um, I strongly believe that leaders um, should be vulnerable as well. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, I think that reflects the human side of them. Because it's so easy, you know, to, uh, um, to put a leader on a pedestal. Um, but um, I think that vulner the vulnerability part reveals the human part of a leader. Well, I appreciate you sharing those because all those are very important. And I think the one that really resonated with me, because for myself, I can look back in my earlier days and that emotional side, I was a roller coaster. And the challenge you create when you're the roller coaster, meaning up and down emotions, is the people that you're leading, you're putting them then on the roller coaster. And just think what you're doing for them. And I, I can remember, I'm sorry to say, Link Yinka, that times that I slammed my hand on the desk and said, by God, you will do this. And, you know, and I look back now and I say, man, how immature I was as a leader and what it creates for us. So I think that's one that really resonates with me. I think all of them are very, very important. But that's one personally when you went through them. 
that I just really resonated. And I think you need to decide which one for you, um, your influence, your accountability, your emotions, your discipline, or your vulnerability. Maybe there's one of those you need to work on now. So that may be the lesson that you really take away as a leader. And the thing is, we're not talking about leader in just title, you know, of leader of running an organization. We're all leaders because I'm sure Yinka has that philosophy that I do. We're all leaders because first we have to lead self. Yeah, exactly. You, yes. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Know. Yeah. Even, you know, I say this all the time, you know, even if you're um, a stay at home mom, you know, if you're watching, if, you know, what you're doing right now is to take care of the kids, be the best, you're leading those kids, you know, be the best mom that you can be, be an excellent mom and um, just find ways to actually, um, to learn how to be the best that you can be in that role in that season. You know, you don't, you don't want to look back and think, oh man, I should have, I could have done things better. You know, I, I could have yelled yet less, but um, you have the power to, to learn and equip yourself with the tools to be the best that you can be in whatever season that you are in life right now. Yeah, I appreciate you sharing that. I have to talk about this one because of course, charges create habits around real goals every day. And really habits and disciplines really help people become that person of excellence. And it really can move them from just living life as I call to really live life. And there's a difference there. And it really helps us lead that life of purpose and fulfillment. So how do you believe habits and disciplines help people to really become that person of excellence? Right. Okay. Yes. Um, that's a great question, Gary. Um, habits, disciplines, um, they, all, they, they make up our belief system. Um, our belief system um, is it, shown in the way we live out our lives on a day-to-day -day basis. So if we don't, if the foundation is, is faulty or if it's corrupted, if we don't have the right um, core values, um, it's just gonna affect everything else, basically. I don't know if that answers your question. So, um, so developing, the, you know, having those right habits, um, routine disciplines in place, having the right core values of essential because, you know, it permeates everything. So I think as a leader, um, I'm a big believer in just evaluating on a regular basis. It's very easy to say, um, oh, you know, I'm a person, of, I'm a generous person. You know, generosity is one of my core values. Um, but then have you sat down to look at, um, to evaluate? Okay, so let's look back, you know, how generous were you with your time, your resources over the last week, over the, the, the last month? Are you just talking the talk? Because you just don't want to talk the talk. You want to walk the walk as well. So just um, regularly evaluating our core values, you know, made up of our habits, disciplines. Um, it helps to ensure that we're not just talking the talk, but we're walking the walk as well. Yeah. And those habits and disciplines, what is it for you? You know, maybe there's someone in your family, maybe it's your spouse that is saying, I need more of this. And you're not willing to do that. And what a great time to review that and really reflect that. I love what you said is really evaluate yourself and see what are the parts you're missing. Or if you've got a son or daughter or both one of each and they're playing activities and you're missing all those activities, is there, are you a miss? But then you say you want to be a great father or mother. So are they missing there? So I really appreciate you sharing that. Another area that you really like to talk about and we uh, agree on and really philosophy wise is the power of spoken words. And I don't pe think people realize there's science behind it, that if you are, you stay negative, you put yourself in that negative side of it. And I can show it. I do a little exercise in less than 30 seconds. I can show someone by telling them false things and they even know that they're false that they become weaker because of that. So why do you think the power of spoken words is so important to us either to build up or it actually destroys our lives by the words we speak each day? Gary, another great question. Another great question. Um, as a person of faith, as a, you know, as a believer in the teachings of the Bible um, and teachings of Jesus Christ, I strongly believe that our words carry power. They carry the power of life and death. So we cannot use our words um, recklessly. We can't use our work, words recklessly. Um, and that's why I'm such a big believer in, we use the, the, the words that we speak, create our world. 
Um, we can, what do I mean by that? We can't go speaking negative every day and then expect a positive outcome. That's, that's impossible. It doesn't work that way. Once we have the realization that the words that we speak create our world, we'll be very, very careful with the words that, that we use, how we utter the words. And then we would also use that to our advantage as well. We will speak those things that are not as though they are. We will call those things forth. And it's not just so, you know, like saying things and then, you know, some kind of magic happens. No, because the totality of you, the your entire being moves in the direction of everything you say. So when you say those things, um, you're speaking to your subconscious. You're saying, okay, this is what we want to happen. And so, the whole of you looks for solution, looks for ways to make those things happen. So I think, so it's key. It's key to understand that our words carry the power of life and death. We can tear down, destroy completely, like you said, with our words. And we can build up um, with our words as well and create the kind of world that we want for ourselves. Yeah. And just think the other point I have to throw in there is not only the words you say to yourself, but if you do have children, yeah. The words that you share them gives them either the confidence or takes that confidence away from them. And you can see that all the time. And I used to use us. I always, I still use the saying, I say, make it a great day. And um, the reason I do that is instead of have a nice day, there's a difference between make it. And what I really shared with my children is the reason I say make it is you have to choose to go out and make it. It's not just going to happen. You have to choose that. So I just really love that and appreciate you sharing that. I have to ask this because you're one that just like myself, we really dug into self-development and personal development really to help us excel in life. And, you know, I know some people that's listening to this podcast, they're just like you and I, but there's somebody listening today that, you know, maybe just got turned on to the charge podcast and is listening today. Why do you think that it's so important for people to really self-develop and really create that personal development to create excellence in their life? Oh, gosh. Yeah. Um, for you to be the best version of yourself, for you to, you know, opt, operate at that optimal level, you have to you have to keep growing. You have to. So you have like you said, you, know, you have to master self. First, you have, to, you have to master self. And one of the ways of doing that is through self-development personal development because you have to keep growing if you if, you know if you stop if you if you're not growing um you're regressing you're you're dying so basically it's just um th this is the way i look at it for in order for me to operate at my best on a daily basis i have to keep learning i have to keep growing it, it's it's ongoing until the day that i take my last breath on this planet I have to keep growing, I, you know, this keep learning. Okay, how can I, are there areas, if there are areas, if I can, if there's an area that I can improve on, you know, I go for it. You know, there's a, there's a good way of doing things, but there's a better way, there's an excellent way of doing things. And I'm always striving for the excellent way of doing things. Yeah, and I love what you said. It doesn't matter till the day you die. And no matter what age you are, that's the point, you know. I remember back in college, you know, I couldn't wait to get out and said, when I get done, you know, I'm done studying. Well, then it's about the life lessons and the own personal development that you do after. And that's where you really grow. So Yinka, you and I could um, have a conversation for several hours. And I think we'd have plenty of conversation um, with us, but we're going to have to get to the recharge round. But before we do, share with them again your book and tell them how they could go get themselves a copy if they'd like to. Wonderful. Yes. So my book, again, it's called Joab King David's Top General essential lessons on character so it's available on amazon um, digital format paperback format and everywhere um where books are sold online um barnes and noble walmart everywhere where books are sold online well i know that's one that people need to pick up and it's a great read and really it's about continuing to learn and grow so as we go into the recharge round, you know, the podcast is named charge and that's the mantra of create habits around real goals every day. What habit do you think has led to success in your life? Yinka? Um, I would say planning. Um, I'm a big believer in just having structure and routine. So just planning my day, planning my week, planning the month, even the year, basically. Um, and that covers um, the area of goal setting as well. Um, if 
the days, the, the weeks that are well planned are the, usually the most productive for me. You know, I, I, I don't do spontaneous. I, I, I do not operate that way, but just planning, just having plan out the month, the year, the quarter, um, it's been a lifesaver for me. Yeah. And it can make a real difference. And that's why I think it's so exciting now what we're sharing, because it's about getting, putting the systems together to get you ready yes. for this new year that's coming up because they're always, we seem like we think they go faster and faster, but if you don't plan, then it just the speeds by and you miss that opportunity and you can't create that excellence in your life. Thank you for yeah. sharing that, Yinka. I don't know, Yinka, do you like going to the spa? I do. Good. Well, I have, I've found out that I really like acronyms. So my spa is simple, positive actions. Oh, okay. <laughs> what is a simple, positive action you do each day to help you move forward towards your goals that you have? Oh gosh. Um, yeah. A simple positive action that I do um, every day is um, just exercising the outdoors. I live on Northeast. So I, you know, when I'm able to, I'm outdoors basically. And it's not, there's just something about, you know, just being, I usually, I'm usually out there very early in the morning, usually between five and 6 a.m. There's just something about, you know, jumping out there in the morning, um, going for a walk or run, whatever it is. Um, it just, it, it sets the tone for the day. And there's, I'm stretching as well. It's not just the exercise and but stretching. So Gary, um, I'm 42. My joints are not like the way when I was 10. So stretching is, it's so important. It just makes the day go better. It's, you know, getting the exercise, releasing all those hormones, the happy hormones and, and stretching. Yes, that's a, a spa for me, a major spa for me. Well, I'm so glad you shared that because I know there's people listening that have fell off either the exercise program or they've not been on it for a long time and it's time to get it started. Now, the only thing I tell you, start now, not January 1. Yes. And even if you're not consistent, start to build it up as a habit, because what Yinka has told you is a habit for her. And I love the idea of stretching. And that's one I need to do a better job of. So Yinka, I'm going to put that on my list to do more <laughs> stretching because I have a few years on you. I'm 54. And it's even worse when you get that age, uh, that, that stretching becomes so important. So thanks for sharing that. Now, my, my last question to you, Yinka, is I know you've had a lot of life lessons and you've went through struggles like we all do. And then you've decided I'm going to follow that and I'm going to create excellence. But what do you think your biggest life lesson is and what did you learn from it? My biggest life lesson to date, to date is this. Excellence attracts excellence. Mm. When you um, strive for excellence in all that you do, inevitably you get, you get that back. Um, so people of excellence, you know, people say they have high standards. No, it's not like that. It's not so much the high standards because they are people of excellence, because they strive for excellence, because they give that in all areas of, of their life. You just expect that back. So when you don't meet up to that part, it's, you know, they start to wonder, you know, it, something is up. But I've, I've seen, and I continue to say that, um, yes, excellence pays great dividends, um, Gary. You can strive to be a person of excellence in all of the area of your life and just not get that back in a um, hundredfold, a thousandfold uh, return. That's been a big lesson for me. I love what you said. Excellence attracts excellence. Yes. That is the key, folks. That is a message for you as you're looking at where you want to propel your life to is excellence attracts excellence. Yinka, it has been a pleasure having you on the Charge podcast. I can't thank you enough. I know we will have in there in the show notes where they can go. You're on Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn. She's yeah. got some great YouTube videos. I've checked those out. So thank please you. go check her out. And if you go to chargepodcast.com, we'll have links to all those places that you can check out Yinka. Um, but share with them again. You've got the book. If there's any way else, if they want to connect with you, how would the best to connect with you is through the social media, social media channels? Right. Um, Gary, thank you. It's been a, again, it's been a great pleasure being here. Um, yes, my website, it's my full name, yinkaatigmenlib.com. You can go on there. You'll learn more about me, um, you know, the coaching um, that I do, the coaching and consulting that I do. And yes, you get to my blog as well. Once you go on the website, all of that information is there. I have a blog with 
you know, loads of very helpful um, strategies as well. So yes, yinka at dignally.com. Excellent. And we'll have that in show notes so you can easily link to it because sometimes if you're like me, may not be the best speller. Um, so <laughs> that becomes easier there. So just go to chargepodcast.com. If you can't get it, and we'll have that in show notes for everyone to be able to check out Yinka. Yinka, thank you again. And I look forward to continuing our conversation as time goes on. Absolutely. Thank you. It's been a pleasure being on your podcast. Thank you for having me on, Gary. Chargers, I hope you really realize, I'm going to leave you that message again. It was very in, and she said some great things throughout, but just think if you want to show leadership in your own life, excellence attracts excellence. And I'm so appreciative to Yinka sharing her knowledge and expertise with us. Now do me a favor. This is one of those podcasts, you know, someone else that needs to listen to it. So, you know, on your podcast app, there's those three little dots. I didn't know this for a long time, but I've been sharing this a lot. You can share this podcast through a little quick, easy text message. And if you go to your podcast now, you can hit those three little dots that say share, and you can do it via text message. You can do it via email, whatever's easiest from you for your phone. But if you would share that with three people, I'd truly appreciate it. And come back next week because we're going to have another great guest for you. And we're going to keep moving through 2021. And then we're going to get started on 2022. But let's really take this time in this fourth quarter to prepare for 2022. Make it a great day. And we'll see you back here next week. Thanks, Chargers. This podcast has ended, but your life doesn't just stop. To continue your inspiring journey, head over to chargepodcast.com and access all the tools and resources mentioned on today's show. If you enjoyed this episode, consider sharing with somebody who may also benefit from the advice provided. That's chargepodcast.com. Until next time, charge in business and life.